I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. This Inkscape tutorial is coming to us by request from Fatima, who asks, please make a video on apparel mock-ups. I thought that was a great idea. There's probably some other software that can do it just as quickly or maybe even better like Photoshop or Affinity, but we're gonna do it in Inkscape. I'll show you step-by-step. Step. We'll take a blank source image like these two t-shirts from rawpixel.com, and if we just drop a design on there, see how it just floats, it's almost like superimposed, it looks very fake. But if you do some modifications to it, we're gonna make it look more like that. So here it is, fake and less fake. So basically we're gonna take a shadow layer, drop it on top of the design and make some very easy modifications to the design itself so it blends in a little bit nicer. You can use this for your own print on demand business or if you have your company logo you wanna have mocked up on your shirts or a fundraiser or school, whatever you wanna do, this is how it's done. So let's open up some Oh, rawpixel.com, thanks again. Rawpixel is not a sponsor of this video, but they do have a good portfolio of source images. You can change the settings to free or public domain, and you can find this exact one or ones like it. The method that we're gonna do works on any of them, and I'm gonna show you the basic steps to do it yourself. Let's start by bringing in that mock-up. Once you have it downloaded, drag it onto your canvas in Inkscape. You'll get a dialog box. For image DPI, just say from file, image rendering mode, none. Okay, and here it is. Let's take a look at this objects menu. Now they're going to be making a new and improved version where it combines objects and layers in the next release of Inkscape. There was a great live stream yesterday by one of the Inkscape developers, Martin Owens. Go check out his channel. And they showed a demo of the new layers and objects menu. It looks pretty cool, a lot more functionality, but for now, we've got this old one. If you need to open it up, go to Object, Objects, and for simplicity, we're gonna name this first layer, double click on where it says layer one, we'll call it the mock-up layer, then hit enter. Doesn't matter so much when there's only one item, but what I'm trying to do is build it so you can just slide any different design that you want once we have this all set up. Speaking of which, to add the next layer on top, hit the plus button, and we'll call this one Graphic layer above current is that's where we want it add so now if i'm going to be dragging in a new design or creating something fresh it's going to be on this graphic layer let me pull in the example design this will work for anything that you can dream up it's coming in with the dialog box from file rendering none okay does this look familiar if you followed along in the last tutorial we made this exact design just with a generic title in here so if you wanna learn how to make this step-by-step, step, check out that last video. I'm just resizing it so it looks okay. I did wanna make a comment. I think doing a mock-up like this is a cool challenge. That's why I wanted to tackle it when Fatima asked. But if you are gonna be mocking something up for sale, you probably wanna get an actual sample from your printer or from your print-on-demand distributor because I wouldn't wanna be doing mock-ups and then the actual product doesn't have the exact coloring or the exact size. But for the example of how to do it in Inkscape, let's continue. All right, and for good habit, let's change it from image 1634 to Maldives. Enter, clean that up. Let's add the final layer, shadow layer, above current add. Now we're gonna create the shadows directly derived from the source image shading here. So I'll go down to my mock-up layer. I want to just do control D duplicate this, but it doesn't let you then drag it up into a different layer. So instead, I'll click on it and do edit, copy, and manually click over to shadow layer. I'll show you so it's easier to see. I will hide our source image layer, and when I'm on shadow layer, I'll do edit, paste, and here it is in the correct layer. I'll change the name of it in a second after we make the modification. What we're gonna do in one simple step is, I want to extract the grays, and there's a way to do it simply in filters. Hit filters, color, grayscale, and you'll get a dialog box. I played with this off camera, and this is the setting that I want, but if yours is all jumbled up, and if you hit live preview, it looks a whole mess. What I like to do is I zero everything out, or in this case, I'll do 1.0 for each color, 1.0, and that gives it a more uniform flat baseline. That's what I want. See these shadows there? And under lightness, 
It's very sensitive. So if you just click over randomly, it'll mess everything up. So instead I'll fine tune it. What was that? Negative 1.14. You can fine tune it with the plus minus. If you want more shadow, then you've reduced the lightness. You have to have transparent selected. If you don't, then it's gonna also bring the white. See how we just lost our image? But if I have the transparent, I'm getting just the darks, the grayscale. apply. Okay, now let's change it to, we'll call it shadows. Minimize that, minimize this. So we have our mock-up layer, the actual graphic, and the shadow layer. Before we put it all together, I wanna zoom in and hide the shadow layer for now. If you think about the actual mock-up image, it's not perfect 4K, it has a little bit of a blur. So I do have to take my graphic here, I'm on my graphic layer, it's got my logo highlighted, and if I just do blur down here, it's too, yeah, way too much. And even if you go down to one, two, it's a whole mess. Instead, go to filters, blurs, blur, and over here, again, here's my presets I liked for this example. I'm at 0 0.09 on horizontal and vertical. It looked kind of blurred up this close, but it will match the actual fidelity of the mock-up t-shirt when it's all together. Apply. The only other modification you have to do to your design to make it really blend is to slightly reduce the opacity. So I'll take it down to just 90, maybe 91. That will help it sit better on the garment. Zoom back out. Back on my mock-up layer, I have my source image hidden. I'll bring it back, so here it is. Do we wanna move this? Let's unhide the shadow layer, and to make it click right into place, make sure you have snapping enabled. It's this magnetic thing with the electricity bolt inside of it. You might have it on the right-hand side. Also from that live stream, they're gonna have a whole new snapping menu. But for now, just find your snapping, make sure it's on. I'm gonna unhide shadow layer. Now you can just drop it here, it'll snap right into place like that. And you can start to see the effect working, but I don't wanna have all this darkness. What if I really wanted to show this nice other orange shirt? To fix it, there's an extra step we can add pretty quickly. Grab your Bezier pen tool and only draw a random shape around the area of shadow that you want to keep. So I want to have the shadow that is going over whatever design area that I have. And I might as well get the bottom here so it doesn't look weird having the shadows cut off. The shape I just drew came as a random light white. Let's change that. Go to objects, fill and stroke menu. I always like to have green just by default for my clipping and I have a little bit of transparency there. All we're doing here is I'm saying, I'll go back to objects so it's very clear. I'm saying this green clipping shape I made, if I have that selected, and then I also hold shift and grab the shadow layer, which is the darkness, then if I go to object, clip, set, it's gonna take only my shadows. You see that? See how it almost looks like it's, it's bending, but it's not, it's just all we did was add a layer on top of the design. That enables us to then grab your design, you can move it anywhere without having to redo the shadow layer. The shadow layer is sitting on top of it no matter where you put it. Another thing from the live stream, keep mentioning that. If I hold shift, supposedly, it will toggle snapping off. You see that? So if I have, <laughs> the first time I've ever done that. If I'm dragging my item, it's trying to snap everywhere. See how it has that red X? Snap, snap, snap. But if I hold shift, that will turn the snapping off temporarily. It's the little things. If that doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry. But if it does, if you know, you know, right? And that's it. I hope it was helpful. Maybe you can use this. Maybe it's a quick solution to something you're trying to accomplish. Let me know any other ideas you have that you want to see done in Inkscape. These are fun little challenges and I like making them so we can showcase the tools and features at our disposal that Inkscape gives us. See you next time.